So today we're gonna to talk a little bit more about ScanF, specifically scan sets. Hey, welcome back everybody. Last week we talked about ScanF, some of the basics, and a little bit of the confusion that new students sometimes get themselves into. Today I wanna to follow that up with something that I think is a really cool feature that ScanF has that early on when I was first taught, I didn't actually know existed, but now I do and I wanna help you to understand these things as well. We'll jump into the code shortly, but if you wanna get access to all the source code for this video and other videos, please do consider supporting this channel on Patreon. A huge thanks to all of you who do, who help me keep the camera rolling and help make this channel possible. A huge thanks, I really appreciate it. So now let's take a look at some code. Okay, so last time we looked at a little simple example right here, we were basically looking at ScanF and how to read things in from standard in using ScanF and, and some of the nuances here. If you haven't seen that video or if ScanF is new to you, please do check out that video. It might make today's video make a little more sense, but what I wanted to do is to just look at another wrinkle in the whole ScanF picture. Specifically, I wanted to look at scan sets. And so let's look at a separate example. So let's say that I have some data. So I've got this input.csv file. So for those of you that haven't seen CSV before, that's just short for comma separated values. And so we could have some, let's just say we could have some numbers in here. We could have, you know, some names. We could have, you know, where I work. Um, anyway, we could list some things, right? We've got some tokens, some different strings, and they're basically just all values that are separated by commas. And we could add some other, and yeah, so pretty straightforward. We could add more, but this will work fine for today. So we've got these values, they're separated by commas, and let's just say that I wanna read these in one chunk at a time. And for simplicity here in my code, I am just going to assume that these are all coming in through standard in. I could use fopen to open the file. Check out my videos on file IO if you're not sure how to do that. It's all gonna be basically the same minus an fopen call, but for simplicity, let's just assume that it's coming in through standard in. So what I wanna do, a couple things. So I have this buffer size up here, that's just an array size that I'm going to use. Let's come in here and make an array for the a character array for the item and we'll do buff size. So that's basically the biggest that one of my items can be. That's fine. And then let's say we have some kind of while loop here and what we're going to do is we just want to read over and over again. Uh, we want to read some input and since we're reading strings, we might initially be tempted to do something like, you know, read a string, something like this. And then we could say item here. And then we're gonna say, as long as that's not equal to end of file. So as long as there's something left to read, then we will just keep going through and getting string after string after string. And let's say that I wanna do something with those strings. Well, the challenge here with percent %s is a string is not very carefully defined, right? It's not very precisely defined. So I'm just saying, I want you to read me in a string. And that's not particularly well-defined. So, but let's just look at what it does. So just for kicks, let's come in here and say, let's print out the string we got. We'll say item and then print out item here. And this will just be kind of fun. So if we compile this, okay, we've got our example two. So then I can just say, let's just say we cat input.csv and pipe it into example, oh, whoops, example two. And you can see, okay, so what did it do? Well, it actually got pretty close to what I was looking for. It got each of my elements and it stopped when it hit a space, okay? So the fact that I had spaces in here, that's the default behavior. So what happens if there's no spaces, right? So let's just take those out really quick and see what happens. So now if I come back and do this again, well, now I'm getting a whole line at a time. So, so basically what it's doing is it's reading in a string until it hits a space, a new line character. I think just any white space will do it. But what I want to do is to grab one item in each of these lists. So I really want to go until it hits a comma. So how would we do that? Well, one of the things that scanf allows us to do is to specify rather than just saying percent %s, which has a particular predefined idea of what it means to read in a string, I can use a scan set. Now, one thing for those of you that didn't see the previous video, you know, I could come in here and also say, I wanna specify the size like 4095 to specifically say, don't read more than this many bytes. And that could protect us from some security vulnerabilities. In the interest of clarity, I am going to leave this off for today just 
while we talk about scan sets, but that issue is still very valid. If this is gonna take input that could be malicious, please do protect yourself against it. But specifically what I wanna do here is I wanna come in and say, like for example, I could say, uh, I want to read in, and I put the square brackets here, and so instead of percent %s, I'm saying percent square brackets, and then I'm gonna specify a set of characters that are allowed. Okay, so for example, one way I could do this is I could say, I'm willing to read anything from A to Z, and let's say lowercase a to Z, and then like zero to nine, right? So this would basically keep reading as long as I've got a letter or a digit. And so let's see what happens here. So if we compile it and we try this again, then you can see, well, now we have a problem because it's basically, it's just getting this first token and it just keeps reading it over and over again because it keeps hitting this comma and it can't get past it. So what I actually wanna do in this case is instead of, well, I could just specify what I want it to include. Instead, I can also specify what I want it to not include. So in this case, let's say we can put this little hat sign, little carrot symbol, and we can say something like this. So what this says is I want you to not include a comma. So read, basically scan along until you hit a comma and don't include that comma. So pick up everything and tell the comma, but don't include the comma. Okay, so that's going to be great. Let's try that really quick and see what happens. And okay, we're getting the same thing. So we still have this issue of like of consuming stuff. We're not really, that's not really helping us. So the other thing that I can do here is I can do percent %c, which means just read a character. This means actually I want to read in that comma that I ran into. And in this case, let's start by just putting an asterisk here in front. And that means I want to read a character, but I don't want to provide a variable. I don't want to actually like, I don't care what it is. Just discard that character. I'm not going to specify an argument out here for that character, but I do want to consume one. So now we can come down here. Let's try it again. And now you can see we're, we're getting closer to what we want, right? We're getting a bunch of different things. We're getting, you know, a token here. We're getting a token, a token, a token. Now something interesting happens right here. And that is that we didn't run into a comma. We ran into a new line character. And so it actually wrapped around the line. So I'm going to make this a little more nuanced because I want to also stop it if we hit new lines. So I'm going to come in here and say slash n. Okay, let's, so now we can go as long as you don't hit a comma and you don't hit a slash n, that's a new line character, then it's going to keep going. Okay, so this hopefully takes care of that issue right there. And we can compile it and we can run it. And so now you can see we are getting our tokens. Okay, so this is this is grabbing our tokens just the way I want. It's reading them all in. So this is one way to do it. Now, a really common thing that we want to do when we're reading in CSVs is you want to read a row and then do something, right? So let's just, let's do something simple. You could do whatever you want in your own programs, but let's just read them in and let's count how many tokens there are per line. So for this, what I'm going to do is let's come in here and I actually want to pay attention now to that delimiter character, whether it's a new line or whether it's a comma. So let's make a character called delim and I'll take this asterisk off and we'll pass in the address of delim. If you're wondering why I I took the address of delim. It needs to be a pointer. Check out the previous video if you didn't catch that. And now let's come down here and, and I'm going to change things up just a little bit. We Before we got all of the, you know, we we're doing printing each item. Instead, now I'm just going to print out the items and let's just reproduce them with commas. So we'll print out the item here and then let's make an integer here that we're going to call item count and let's start it out as zero. Okay, so then every time I read in one of these tokens, I'm just going to increment item count. And then if our delimiter is equal to our new line character, then simply what I'm going to do here is let's print out the count. So let's just say something like percent %d items, something like that. And let's, oh, and I want this all to be on one line. So let's take that new line off and then let's print out item count here. Okay. So we're going to get all the items hopefully, and then we'll get the number of items will show up there at the end. And then of course here we want to take item count equals zero. So we'll reset our item count back to zero. And so this should do what I want. So let's compile really quick. And now if we run it, you can see that now I'm getting all my tokens and we're counting up saying that this row has four items, this row has four items. And so this is just a really quick way to, to specify exactly what we're looking for and when we want scanf to stop reading things in. And this is a pretty slick way to read in CSV files and to do things on our per row basis. So I hope that's interesting. I hope you learned something new. I hope that helps you in a future project. Like the video if it was helpful, subscribe so you don't miss future content. And until next week, I'll see you later. Thanks for being here.